Question is from Cameron Stewart, 18. What are the top three to five things that the average American can do to improve their long-term health? Oh, great question. So mm. I'll list what I think is is number one. And the reason why I think it's number one is when I, when I think of all the things that a person can do to positively affect their health, when I think of the average person, I think of what will give me the most bang for buck. Like okay. what's the one step that someone can take that's going to make the biggest general impact. Not perfect, because it's only one step. There's Get more a big bang. There, there's more steps, but what's the one thing that, that the average American can do that will really positively give them the biggest positive impact? And if we look at the average American and we look at the health problems, the, the vast majority of our health problems, our chronic health problems, are related to obesity and the overconsumption of food. That's number one. It really is. And you know, even high sugar, high carb, high fat, the wrong foods. When you throw that on top of a lot of calories, they become catastrophic. So the number one thing, and if it's because it's one thing, it can only make it one thing. So I'm not going to say diet because that's a lot of things, right? right I'll say right. one thing. Avoid heavily processed foods. Yeah. That's it. I've got three right away, oh, yeah. and that's okay, number one. I've yeah, got yeah, three yeah. right away that come to mind. Number one, 100%, I agree with you, processed foods. Yeah, because that, that drops your calories by a, five to 600 calories it every is day. A, it's, a simp, it's a simple and it's not simple in, in what it takes discipline wise. It's simple as in what it what it takes to follow. It's yeah, just, just like that's it. Yeah, just get rid of it. Like eat whole foods. If you're hungry, eat whole foods. Not trying to tell you to count, not trying to tell you pay, pay attention to macros, none of that shit. Just literally eliminate processed foods. That single thing I think is the best thing you do. The second thing I, I would say is actually creating good habits and behaviors around movement. And it could be as simple it could be as simple as this. Add a 10 to 20 minute walk to meals. Every time you eat, that you just make a habit of you don't sit on your ass for the next 45 minutes. You just, and it doesn't need to be hour. It'd be great if it's 45 minutes or an hour, but make the habit of going for 10 to 20 minute walk right after. That's you called eat. ritualizing activity. Right, and it's a hundred. You're a hundred percent right. Now you might be thinking. God, a 10-minute walk? Aren't you guys trainers? Don't you guys teach people resistance training, all that stuff? Yes, that would be great. That's actually the best possible thing you could do. But again, just like I said with eliminating processed foods, you ritualize some activity. The odds that you're, you're consistent, the odds that you can fit in your day, uh, and the impact it'll have because of that. Remember that. Impact doesn't necessarily mean the best thing. Impact has to take into account what will people actually do? How many right. people will this work for? And what you just said makes perfect sense. Ritualize yeah. a little bit of activity. This one isn't really fitness related. It's more like community related. And I think that based off that study that you had told us a while back about like relationships and like mm. how that plays into a factor with your long-term health. And you see this in the blue zones and you see this with we're social creatures. We're social animals. And I think that we've all gone way beyond that. And we think that we're being social by being on our phones and talking to people. People through social media and through all these things. We don't have any meaningful interactions with other human beings. And I think if if you were to like kind of uh, definitely work on that and like work on giving, you know, more of yourself into your community, making friendships, making relationships with people, like in terms of long-term health, it have a massive impact. Statistically speaking, you're a hundred percent right, Justin. Having good relationships is uh, paramount. In fact, having bad relationships is equivalent to smoking. I think something like 15 yeah. cigarettes every single think day. think of the stress it causes. It's That's crazy. Right. You, I didn't even think that, and you went to that point. And the reason why I knew the 95% communication thing was because what I was going to write about was exactly this topic is if the average person is claiming that they're spending four to four to five hours on social media every day, 95% of communication is nonverbal and actually physical right in front of somebody. How much are our social communication skills degrading as Americans right now by being- Why do you think there's so much conflict? So right. well, that's why we have emojis and all kinds of ways to try to make up for the difference. Right. But it just, it just doesn't. It just doesn't. Absolutely doesn't. And, right. st and studies will, will so, prove this. And in, in, in regards to the relationships- you know, it's funny, I, I, Jessica and I like to walk around the neighborhood um, and we'll do this like 30 minute loop. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ran into an old friend of mine, this guy that I, way back when I first opened my, my personal training studio when I was 23, I think, I trained this guy for a second. Great guy, one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Lost contact, but I still remembered him and you know thought about him. Ran into him, he lives in our neighborhood. So we start talking, he's got kids, and we're like, you know, after we leave, you know, Jessica and I are like, we should have them over for dinner. Now we didn't. Now you know why we didn't? Because why most people don't. You think about all the time, the energy, we gotta organize. Yeah. But you know, we we talked about it and I said, you know what? That prevents so many of us from not having these relationships. 
But the reality is every time we do it, I've never, I'm almost never. You never regret it. No, I've invited people. Yes, it's a lot of work and all that stuff. But then when they leave, I'm like, you know, that was a meaningful yeah. four hour, you know, conversation. It made me think of it because I've been coaching and putting myself out there a little bit more and like interacting with other parents and kids. And, uh, you know, I just forgot how much of an impact that made, you know, even on myself, mm-hmm. not, not not to mention, you know, everybody else that, that, that we're starting to connect with more. So, so I, I had three that came to mind right away. One was not what you just said, Justin, but I 100% agree that if we're going three to five, that has to be in one of those right there. The other one that, uh, I think is extremely important and extremely overlooked is building some sort, and I think it's getting worse, uh, so this becomes more important, is building some sort of night ritual the same way you have a morning ritual. Oh, and, yeah. and I like saying it like that versus telling you something specific to exactly do because every indivi- everyone's mm-hmm. going to have an individual variance just like we have with our morning routines. But the, the, the one single thing you can do that will impact it is just make it a priority the same way you do a morning routine. The same way you- You allo- get ready for your day. You, you allot yourself a certain mm-hmm. amount of time to shower. You allot yourself a certain amount of time to brush your teeth, to have your breakfast, to make your coffee, to maybe read. I don't know what you do in the morning, poop. but for sure, yeah, poop, whatever. Yeah. You for sure have somewhat of a routine that you start your day off with. And some routines are probably better than others, but at least having one- is is set you up to have a successful day, right? Yeah, you're right, 100%. Because we go to bed, we hit the pillow, we expect, oh, I'm going to go to sleep, have great sleep. Right. Yeah. And lack of quality sleep is very detrimental. To 100%. Health. And and only getting worse with the, the phones coming into the bedroom, with the TVs coming into the bedroom, with the laptops being on your lap still, and looking at and the lights, and we talk about this all the time, disrupting sleep. So just having some sort of discipline around how you prepare yourself to sleep, which is one of the most important times uh, of the day, even though you're asleep, uh, as far as your body hormonally and longevity wise and stress wise. So that to me, I think uh, if you treat that with care. I what think a great list. Think about this. If, if, if the average American dramatically reduced, didn't even count calories or anything, just dramatically reduced heavily processed food consumption, ritualized a little bit of activity. Maybe tying it to yep. when I wake up or tying it to nutri- to food, like you said, Adam. So all a 10-minute walk after every meal, that's nothing. They prioritize relationships a little bit. Like, okay, I'm going to go out of my way to hang out with people a little bit and talk with them. And then the fourth one you said, just create a ritual so you can prepare yourself for sleep. If they just did those four things. Boy, would we uh, that alone would solve a huge chunk of the chronic health problems that we're suffering from right now. Totally. 